Hello. Good morning, y'all. It's just entirely too quiet in this room. Good morning, you guys. I'm turning on like some background stuff because it's so quiet. I thought about this yesterday, but I had already started talking and I was like, I'm going to try that tomorrow and see if that helps me because sometimes it gets like eerily quiet when I stop talking. I don't know, I guess because all of y'all are on here. Like my mind thinks that there should be people talking back at me <laughs> or something. And um, anyway, so um, I'm good. I... I am like probably delusional um, this morning because I have had a very long night. My kid has not felt the greatest. I don't know what it is. He's he's okay. Um, I've just been giving him like some medicine, but he he said his head was hurting, so that makes me very nervous because I really hope my kid doesn't have migraines like I do. But he said his head was hurting, and he actually woke up in the middle of the night, and he um. He just, he woke up in the middle of the night. He got sick because he said his head was hurting so bad. Um, and he's run like a very, 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 very low grade temp. So I think it's because his head's just killing him. Um, he runs a, he runs a fever. Like he's, he's pretty, he's pretty bad about that. Maybe allergies. Yeah, I don't know. But um, he was up. And then y'all, this is the craziest thing. Ugh, like I, you can't make it up. Okay. So he get, he's up and down throughout the night. And then my dog poops on my bed. <laughs> oh, like what in the world? I was like, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is happening? Oh my goodness. Like my husband got up when I got up with Pierce, he got up to let her out. Cause she was like running around, like she had to go to the bathroom. Well then Pierce started stirring and she started doing that again. And then she pooped on the bed and I was like, what is, what is going on? Like, oh, I was like, okay, this is, this is literally the, this is nuts. So I had to clean that up, which was horrible. I was gagging. And, um, I put her in her little kennel thing, and then, um, I got, like, Pierce was, like, ready to go, so I, it was 3 a.m. at that point, so I got up and just came into the living room and was like, well, you know, I'll just try to sleep in the recliner or something, and so, um, <laughs> like, we got in here, and I went to the bathroom and got back in there, and Pierce was asleep, and I was like, I, at this point, I'll just do the best that I can. So, oh my gosh, it's just nuts. Like, like really, like all of that in one night, it was just crazy. So if y'all think that life over here is perfect, that's just a little tidbit into what happened. Um, the pooping on the bed was the, was the, was it, you know, like I can handle a lot of things, but I was like, <laughs> I just, like, what in the world? She's never done that before. Um, so anyway, uh, that was an interesting night. So we, uh, <laughs> we're, um, we're lacking on sleep here and a little bit delusional, but it's okay. Um, we're going to be fine. I think he's fine. Like he's, he, we're still going to go to school today because you know, like with me, when I have a headache after I throw up, I'm fine. And my temperature does elevate when I have headaches. I can feel it. Like I can feel like my body temperature raises, but I don't get. I don't really get fever ever. Like, I never register a fever. Um, oh, this happened to me before. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I'm not the only one because it was nuts. It was like, <laughs> like this is the craziest thing that's ever happened. Um, but anyway, so uh, I did want to say that um, I, I had somebody 
say something about like we carved pumpkins yesterday afternoon like my mom went and got pumpkins and we carved pumpkins and apparently we did that like during my childhood growing up but I don't remember that and um there was like a comment about Halloween and you know the history of jack-o'-lanterns and stuff and it just made me like it's okay when people comment that stuff because I know people have different convictions, but it did make me th this morning want to say like, you, you guys, you can turn things that the world means for evil and just have fun with your kid. Like that, that's, we can do that as Christians. As a Christian, I don't celebrate Halloween as the, as a, some kind of dark time. You know, we turn it into as light as we can because there's so much darkness in the world. And so, um, so, anyways, I just wanted to, like, throw that out there if y'all saw my little outfit video. And I started doing outfit videos, and I know that that's not typically what I do. But I have so many people ask that I was like, I'm just going to do, like, a quick one every day and just throw it out there. And the people that don't care about it, they can just keep scrolling. But, um... That's actually how I originally started on social media because I really like, um like how how to piece together outfits especially if they're like thrifted and different things like that and then God just has been working so much on my heart and it was always going to be about God it just um he's just kind of made this space really cool and I think that as as a Christian influencer one of the things we don't see enough is like just real life like it doesn't have to be aesthetic you don't have to wear just white and black all of the time like you can you can just live life and so that's what I want to do I, I just want to show people how to just live life like with chicken nugget happy meals still on my side table in my living room from this week and everything I mean it's just life so we're doing hallelujah treats I love it um I love 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 it oh and makeup tutorial yeah I keep forgetting about that I will do that I promise um but honestly um I, I feel like we need more people who are just like really transparent and honest on social media and as honest as you can be without like giving all of the junk because I feel like it just brings like reality back like there are people who just live life and it, everything's not a aesthetic and stuff like that and as this platform grows I'm like god is that what you want me to do like do you want me to show that like real life with you is is just it's just normal life with you in it like that's what it is it's normal life it's not some kind of you know, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing life. It's just normal life and Jesus just does all the good through it. So, um, I love y'all. And this morning, um, this morning I get asked, where's the funeral all the time? I love the purple beats. I know I love those too. Um, so anyway, with this morning I have some, I'm going to throw a kink in there for y'all. Um, it's going to be so, it's going to be so fun. Like it, it, I'm ready. So let's go ahead and get started so we can get through it. But, um, we're going to be in first Peter chapter one verses 22 through 25. And, um, I'm excited because it, this just kind of landed on this and I was like, yes, this is good. So, um, let's pray and then we'll get started. Dear God, I come to you this morning and I just want to thank you for giving me joy and strength and the ability to just wake up this morning. Um, God, we know that you're still present in the chaos. Um, help, help me just to uh, remain on task today with my, my scattered, uh, tired mind, God, and allow this space to be one that's productive for your kingdom and not, um, one for, for my glory or anybody else's, but for you, God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross that no matter what happens, God, that you're the only one that shows up and speaks into us, God, that it's not any opinion. It's it's you and your truth and your word. God, I pray that you would um, cover me with your goodness, God. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. I have a lot that I want to talk about, and y'all, I'm trying so hard to allow God to... Um, speak into me what he wants me to speak because I'm not some theologian like I don't have a theology degree and God still uses me and so I, I love that because you don't have to have a degree you don't have to have all these letters behind your name um, to be able to be used by God you just have to be obedient and so there are a lot of things and a lot of things that I believe and a lot of things 
on both sides of the fence that are, I believe are being very misconstrued about end times and about, um, and about things that are happening in the world right now. And there's just chaos. And it, it just seems like Christians are just grasping for straws. For like anything that they could look to for hope. Or anything that they could look to for assurance. And I just want to like shake people. And be like no, our assurance is in God alone. Like our hope is in God alone. We can't like pull out this like prosperity gospel thing. Or all these different things and say like. This is this is what we can rely on. No, our hope is in our salvation in God alone. Our our eternal joy, our eternal hope is in the fact that we get to spend eternity with him regardless of what we have to go through on this earth. And so, um I don't know. Y'all pray for me because there's a lot of things that are being said right now that even maybe I grew up believing or or whatever it is that now I'm like, I don't believe those. And it's because the, the more I get a higher view of God, the less that I focus on myself and like the prosperity of me and different things like that. And, and, and like think good things that I deserve, if that makes sense, because I don't deserve any good thing outside of the grace and the mercy of God. And so I just feel like so many things that are being said, I'm like, no, this is good. Like people are going to be so disappointed when things don't work out the way all of these big creators are saying them. So I need y'all just to pray that God would guide me and how and when he would want me to share those things, because I just want, I want my goal and and my life my life mission is to point people to Jesus so much so they fall so much in love with Jesus that whatever happens, no matter what it is, that whatever we have to go through as Christians, whether it's the worst of the worst of the worst, we still are so steadfast in our faith because our eyes are so fixated on him that it doesn't matter. Like we are so we are so able to go through anything that we are called to go through as Christians, to suffer for his glory, whatever it is, because we love Jesus so much. And that is my life mission. Because I like I, when you have that high view of God, that he is just that good and we're just that not, it just changes everything about the way that you're able to like put in perspective what is happening in the end times and all that kind of stuff. And it also changes the way that you're able to view those things in light of his goodness and his grace and his mercy through it all. So I just want to um, just pray that like God will show me because I am praying for that, that God will show me when, if, how, whatever, that we can maybe discuss those things and it be his words, his timetable, his wisdom, his everything. Okay. So we're, anyway, we're in First Peter chapter 2, verse 22, but that has been on my mind a lot, and so, um, anyway, I just, I just um, need y'all's prayers over that, because I don't know what God wants me to do with that. A lot of those things are so controversial that you bring them up, and they make people so nervous and scared, and people go haywire, and that's not of God. God is not the author of confusion. He's not a chaos coordinator. Um even though he does he does coordinate all of our chaos that's not he is he is he is steady he is steadfast he is not chaos um and he has got a full plan for all that is happening so um always has always will um anyway so y'all be praying for that and maybe that is to come just to give you a heads up but um verse 22 of first peter uh says Let's see. Did I put the wrong? Okay. No, sorry. I saw chapter two and I was like, wait a minute. We're still in chapter one. Uh, I thought I flipped the wrong page. Um, so verse 22 of first Peter says, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all gra all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The gra grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to 
you. So if you want to keep reading today, you can because this is a letter. Paul, uh, uh, Peter, what I keep saying, Paul, Peter was writing this. So it, it does definitely does go straight into verse or chapter two when you're reading this like a letter um, because he starts chapter two with so put away all malice. We have to remember that like the Bible wasn't separated in chapters and verses um, before it was like translated so many times. It was just a bunch of books and letters and different things that were written written by people. And so we did that like we did that for ease of like breaking things down and, and different things like that for commentaries, which I'm very glad God gave people the wisdom to be able to do that. So a lot of times, like in scripture, you'll see continuing thoughts. So don't think just because you have a section of scripture that it's like thoughts. Okay, now I'm moving on to a different thought. Now I'm moving on to a different thought. It may jump around, but all of it connects because they're writing this as like a continuation type of thing. Okay, so anyways, um, let me go to my notes real quick because we need to talk about what we talked about yesterday. There were two main ideas. And yesterday in verses 13 through 21, we talked about how our hope and our future reward, which is eternity with Jesus, is our motivation. No matter what happens, our hope and our eyes being fixed on Jesus and our eternal reward in heaven with him, that's our motivation. That's what we look for. That's our, that's what gets us going in the morning. That's what gets us out of that that funk and the fires and the sufferings and the temptations and all those different things. It's our eyes being fixated on Jesus. Um, and then two, we are to live in fear of God who redeemed us at the priceless cost of his own son. We have to live in a a fear that is that produces reverence and awe. It's a it's a it is a fear of his um discipline towards us as his children because we will have to serve consequences for the things that we do even when we're forgiven for them we are forgiven but we're forgiven in light of like an eternity worth of suffering that we all deserve from one sin that we commit uh, because one sin separates us from the love of God Romans tells us that and so one sin condemned us for all of eternity and God sent his son to redeem us of that and as people who live in a sinful world we make the choice choice to not take the way of escape that God provides. That's in scripture. So with the temptation, he will always provide a way of escape, um, or he will also provide a way of escape through always too. Um, and we make the active decision to not take it. We are the ones who choose sin. Like when, even after we're, we're saved, we're the ones that choose sin. Actually, all the more after we're saved, we choose sin, uh, because we live with the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have the choice not to choose sin, and we do anyway. So we are going to have to serve some consequences for that. There's consequences of our sin in light of the relationships that we are in. Um, some some big, big ticket ones that we like to throw out there, adultery and different things like that. Yes, we can be forgiven for those, but we have to serve the consequences of that. Like with the relationship that we destroyed or, or the other relationship with the other person, different things like that. That's just a, that's just a very, I guess, crude example of, of the consequences we still have to pay, um, for our sin, but not the consequence of eternal separation from God. So, um, that's what we talked about yesterday. We talked about having that fear of like, God, I want to worship you. I want to serve you. You're holy. You deserve my devotion. You deserve my praise. Let, let me live in light of the glory that you've get, that you deserve. Right. Um, yes. Conviction, conviction is such a blessing. Um, so verse 22 says, we're moving on to this this reading for today and then i'm gonna throw something out there i'm gonna throw something at y'all um even though it's already 5 22 we're gonna do it um having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love love one another earnestly from a pure heart we're gonna go on to verse 23 since you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of god we are purified by being obedient to truth. So the way that we become pure, um, the Bible calls it like white as snow. The way that we are made pure again and he purifies our heart is because we obey truth, which is 
Jesus, which is his, his coming as Messiah. That is the truth of the scripture. That is believing and having faith, that initial faith act and who Jesus is and that this is the infallible truth that God gave us. It, it has no fault. It is, it is 100% truth. God is truth. Everything about it is truth. There is not one thing in this scripture that is incorrect or not accurate. Okay. That's what we believe. We obey that in light of our salvation. So we have that initial belief in who Jesus is, turning from our sin, repenting from it. We walk towards Jesus. We fully believe in who he is and we obey that. Um, we've talked every day, I think, about how our salvation isn't produced by works, um, but our salvation produces works. The, the salvation that we have causes us to work for his kingdom. It's not enough to repeat a prayer and just sit down and be satisfied thinking that that's what the Christian life looks like. That is not a biblical view of salvation. Um, that is where our culture has gotten things very wrong. Just saying with your mouth that you believe in Jesus and not actually living a life in service to him is not biblical salvation. Um, so we have to wrap our minds around that because we grew up in the, the kind of Billy Graham era movement where a lot of people got saved and because they repeated a prayer and all this kind of stuff. And then it's like, oh, well, they never showed back up at church. Like they they just went on about their life, like continued the same. And um, it's because an emotional experience does not equate to what the Bible says is salvation. Salvation is actually turning from your sin and worshiping God in response to that and giving him the praise and the glory and the, the you know, the sacrifice of your life. It's taking up your cross daily, Luke says, and following him daily. It's a daily surrender to our God. Um, so, um being able to love one another is one of those things. Like being able to love your people and, and the people around you in a correct way, that's a response to salvation. Um, that's a, that is a, that is a faith act because we can't love people properly outside of the love of God. Um, that's why there's the divorce rate is so high. And actually, the divorce rate is actually pretty equal among Christians and non-Christians. And it's because we're not people that call themselves Christians. A lot of the times, that's why they call us hypocrites. Because a lot of the people that claim to be of the Christian faith don't actually walk the walk of a Christian because it's it causes a lot of um, denying of self, actually all denying of self. And people don't want to do that. Like we want to glorify ourselves. We, we talked about this yesterday. Like we, we act like Satan in that because we want to be the God of our own life. And that's why he was cast out of heaven because he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be above God, right? Yeah. The same belief as the demons. Like it's a, it's a head knowledge of I'm acknowledging that God wrote this about Jesus Yes, I believe that it actually happened. There's a difference in believing that Jesus actually died for your sins and believing that he is the Lord of your life. There's a difference in believing in salvation and believing that the salvation is yours through Jesus Christ and living a life accordingly. There's a big difference in that. Um, yeah, the Bible tells us that even the demons know me and shudder. Like they even know him and have a fear of him. Um, trust me, they know what they're, they know what's about to happen. They know the end game. Like they've been alive a lot longer than we have. And so, um, they can, they can spit scripture back out at us too. They listen to it every day and have for years, right? So, um, if we think that they're ignorant to that, we, we have, we have been very, very mistaken. Um, so Anyways, that's how they twist it just enough to get you to think something that's not true, right? Um, okay, so our love for each other should be sincere. Sincere love is the mark of a Christian. It says it right here. A sincere brotherly love. Not one that is self, self-promoting or self-seeking. Um, there's a whole like chapter of scripture about it. And I can't, th one of y'all will pop that in the the uh 
comments, I'm sure, because I can't think about it right now. Um, it's lost my, lost in my mind. But we can love people correctly when we love people like Jesus. It takes a love that looks like Jesus to love people correctly. Um, and we can't do this without Jesus. Worldly love is very conditional. I'm looking at my notes if you're wondering why I'm like looking to the side. That's probably distracting for some of you because it would be for me. Um, worldly love is conditional right it's it's based on like what can you do for me like how can you serve me in the love that you're giving or or if I love you how can you serve me in the love that I want right like it's all about me it's all about me 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 so I'm gonna give you love but I expect something in return like I expect the love back um usually more so than the love is given to us if we're being very honest like a lot of times we we will give love and then we expect that to be reciprocated even more so than we actually give love because we we just we're selfish people at the core of who we are um but christian love is what can I do for you? It's a, it's a self-sacrificing love. It's different. So we have the self-seeking love of the world. And then we have the self-sacrificing love of a Christian. And that's because of Jesus and our perspective on it. Um, yes, how holy he truly is, right? Like it's, it, especially, and I put like, it makes a difference in our relationships. Example, marriage. Um, because like in my, in my marriage um, with Dustin, if I'm focused on the loving the way that the world loves, then I'm I'm looking at him and saying, okay, well, you were here for an hour and you didn't do the dishes. You didn't sweep the floors. Like, I have to come home from town and do that. And, and all of this, like, checklist type of thing that I'm like, I need you to do this to show me love. Like, and, and if I focus on those things... He doesn't even think about it. Like, he doesn't even, it never crosses his mind. He comes home from work. He's got his mind is still set on everything that he still has to do. He is, he is go, 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 go a hundred times a minute. And so, he's not even looking at the fact that the dishes are still dirty and have been since he got home. Um, and I'm not saying he never washes the dishes. He totally does. I'm using this as an example. But I come home, and when I'm focused on this self-seeking kind of love, I'm aggravated because I'm like, I've been at the grocery store. You know, I've done all of these things, and you've not, you've literally not done anything. But I'm not focused on the fact that he's had a bad day. Like, he's had a hard day. He's had a lot of things he's had to move around. He's exhausted from having to figure out, like, how he's he's got a big job at his job that he works at. And my perspective, if it's over here in the Christian side of things that is self-sacrificing is like, okay, how can I serve him in, in coming home with an attitude that is, that is, um, about love and about the, and about him and about serving him and about helping him at the end of the day, regardless of what he's done for me. So if I walk in, if used to, let's say, if I walk in, um, before I, before I really like started growing a lot in my faith, if I would walk in from being gone, like for a weekend on a business trip or something, and like the house was not a mess, but you know, there was dishes and stuff. I would get so aggravated because I would be like, why can I not just get, why you like, you've been home all weekend. But when we look at things the way Christ looks at them, we look at them and we walk into the room differently. We look at it like, Hey babe, what's going on? You know, like how, you know, have you had a good weekend? Like we can take care of those things later. Like what's happening? Um, you know, what's on your mind? Have you had a bad day? Like, do y'all get what I'm saying? You know, it just shifts your perspective into, instead of what can you do for me? It's what can I do for you? Like, how can I serve you in that? And it'll change the way that you, even as a, as a wife, look at housework. And because the world now like is so ridiculous in the way that they're like, Everything should be split completely 50-50. If your husband doesn't do X, Y, and Z, he's not a good husband. He's not a good spouse and like all this kind of stuff. And it's it's made us like annoyed or aggravated at each other because we think that, that people aren't measuring up. And that's exactly the way the world looks at things. But as, the, as women, we are called to such a higher service if we could just wrap our minds around how much God has called us to, um, I think John Piper was it that said women 
were called to minister to 75% of the world's population. 75% of the world's population. But we focus on the 25% by saying it's not men. You know what I'm saying? But we're called to minister to all of the women and all of the children. And we we lose the sight of the 75% because of the 25%. And it's just crazy to me. Like, I'm just throwing all these things out here because the world is telling us as women that we should be getting so much back than what we're giving and it makes us bitter and it makes us not want to do all of those things and it makes us like angry towards people when really we should be serving our people in that and that's a way that we worship God through that um it was just a it was just a um it that was just like a side thought that I had while doing this like the world has corrupted so much of the way that our hearts should be postured towards, you know, serving and loving and, and um, doing things in our family and our household. Um, so anyways, okay, I, I needed... I needed to hear that myself too because we all lose sight of that, especially with this like TikTok app where, where all these men are doing all this and I'm like, you, you about know. That most of them get on there to make that video and then their wife probably does it the other 90% of the time. So don't get caught up in some of those things. Like just, just like keep a perspective is what I'm trying to say, right? Um, and we just also have to realize that once I like shifted my perspective to the pressure that is on that man, the pressure that is on my husband and your husband and all of them, um, Women are tired because they walk outside of the home, too. That's so true. Like, I work all day, all night. Like, not all night, but I work all day and in the mornings and do this and all that kind of stuff. But, um... But still, like, my, my my service to the Lord is also in serving my family. And we've just, the world's trying to make us lose sight of that because the enemy is trying to make us bitter in what God's called us to do and how he's called us to serve our family. And I'm not saying that there's not help in that. Dustin does the dishes at times. He'll do the laundry. He does his own laundry. You know, like, there is a, there is a balance in that as well. But um, we shouldn't ever be bitter towards them um, because, honestly... Guys are not good at communicating the stress that they feel. There may be guys on here right now that are like, I, I, I joined the wrong chat today. <laughs> but they're, guys are not great at communicating how they feel. They're not great at like communicating their emotions or, or most of them that I, I am in contact with, but I'm speaking of. Um, and so a lot of times the burdens that they carry they, they're just, we don't realize like what their mind is doing all of the time. Like they're constantly thinking of speaking for my husband, like how can I keep my family safe? Like all of these different things are going through their mind and they just don't express those things. And so we just think, oh, they're not paying attention when really they are, they are paying attention. They're just more on the the defender side of things. Does that make sense? Like they're in the, the warrior side of things is how I look at it. Like he's like, he's like protector, protector. Like his mind is always on like, how can I keep my family safe? How can I be that, that man of the household, that sort of thing. And so if you'll shift your perspective from that, they really are paying attention. It's just not in the way that you are and it will change everything. So Anyway, I don't know why we got into a marriage talk this morning, but um, I think that that's important for us to understand. Um, and the world is trying to destroy the way that we look at our marriages. So, <laughs> being a guy I ran into the wrong chat, I do agree with you. Yes. Um, yes, it's very much needed. We need to talk about these things. Um, okay. I have to take a drink. Um, okay, let's move on. We are born again to a living word. Um, that's the word of God. The seed that is not perishable. Yes, right. He wouldn't want me as protector. No, absolutely not. That would not be for me. Although I could do it if I guess if I had to. Like if somebody messed with my kid, it, it's going to be a whole thing. It's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> like I probably will. It'll be one of those take my earrings moments, you know. Um. That was a very worldly, uh, you know, like reference. But anyways, um, the not of perishable seed, that is the word. That is the word. That is the living word of God. We believe it. We hang on to it. It is truth. We are born again by it. Yeah, mama bear. Um, 
And then the Bible verses, just so that you know where they came from, the the um, it's indented in my Bible, so it's like this. Um, those verses came from Isaiah forty verses six and eight. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> I wish you could hear us laugh. I know, right? Like, uh, I'll be snorting sometimes, like watching stuff, and I wish I could hear y'all laugh too, because I know y'all are laughing with me. That's why I had to turn on this music, because this this room is eerily quiet. Um, all right, here's the surprise. <sighs> Here's the surprise or the the side note that we're taking. We're going to take a detour for a few minutes to James chapter 1 verses 1 through 18 because um, as I was reading this, that was one of the scriptures that was referenced from verse 24 and I think it's good. So we're taking a detour. We're taking a detour this morning because we're done with those few verses and we're going to James chapter 1. And we're going to read it, and I didn't even do notes on it. It's just an open discussion um, about what we're going to read. So, yeah, it's the ESV Study Bible. It's in my um, Amazon if you're interested. Uh, okay, we're going to start in verse 2. Count it all joy, my brothers. Man, do we need this right now. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know... That the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. When we ask things of God, we have to believe that he's able to give that to us. We have to believe, like, God, you're able, you know? Um, How cool is that? Uh, Let the lowly brothers boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation. Because like, this is the part that it was referencing to. Because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. We're going to read the next verses and then go back to that one. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. The Bible says that. He himself tempts no one. Listen to this. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. It's our own sin within us. It's our own sin that lures us. It's our own desires. It's our own like messed up self. Um, then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin and sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. When we give into those things, that's what it produces, right? Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from God coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation of or shadow due to change. He doesn't change. He's the same. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Of his own, he will be brought, he will, of his own, will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be kind of, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Apparently, my vision is messing up and I can't read this morning. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay, so let's go back really quick to the 9 through 11, and I want to read you the study note on it. Um, The place of rich and poor before God. I think this is so timely. Both poverty and riches bring enormous pressure on a person to focus on the world rather than on Christ. James exhorts the poor to boast or glory in their high status in Christ. The lowly brother will be exalted and vindicated by God. In contrast, James exhorts the rich to boast in their um, humiliation. 
by realizing that their wealth is temporary and that it brings them no advantage before God, and by identifying with the poor in their affliction. The church is to be a um, counter-cultural community, which reverses the values of the world. Giving the context, James seems to be saying that the challenges of poverty and wealth may be one of the greatest trials for Christians, as would be suggested by his immediate emphasis on be on the blessed status of those who remain steadfast under trial. James also echoes Jesus's warning that you cannot serve God and money. This is um James chapter 1 um it's really 2 through 18. And the reason why I wanted to read that is because um I just think that it's so timely that we read that about like the the grass withers and the flowers fade and then James brings in the part about that being also about money. Um and then the study note was so timely because it doesn't matter what position you're in whether you're wealthy or whether you are having struggles with money, it creates a um a stress on your life because there's so much pressure on somebody with money. To be able to use that to the glory of God and not depend on yourself. And then there's also pressure on somebody that does not have enough to live. Like be able to do what they have to do to be able to survive and provide for their family and different things like that. And and what James is saying is like count it all joy. No matter which circumstance you're in, it's stressful. And I think that we in this world have been like taught like money is just going to solve all of your problems like if you just have enough then you'll have what you need and it's not true because the the fact of the matter is if you're a christian it's going to create less of a mindset fixated on christ and so what's better is it better to be wealthy and be and have temptation to to lean on yourself more than more than christ or is it better to be without and have to lean on Christ for all that you need? Like, which is better? <clears throat> and there's people that get in both positions. And I don't know. When I read that, I was like, that's timely for me. So I think that that's also probably timely for a lot of people who right now, it just recenters our focus on the fact that God is enough. And that no matter what we're going through, it's it's not, it's not okay for us to ignore it but we also can't fixate on it because God's going to be enough to 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 sustain us and to give us what we need and he's always going to show up he if he clothes the um what does he say if he clothes the sparrows if he feeds them then all the more he will do for you um that's a like a that's a verse in scripture um and so uh I don't know anyway I just was like I just feel like that I need to read that he always provides. Um, <clears throat> so we went over a lot of things today. We went over marriage. We went over um, money. We went over a lot of the things that people seem to be struggling with in this world. Matthew 6, yeah. God feeds the birds, yes. Just at the right moment, he will prevail. Yeah, and I think too, like as Christians, we have to remember that this life is not meant for it to, it's not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be, it's not meant to be something. It's not, this isn't a cakewalk for us. This isn't meant to be easy. It's not meant to be something that we, um, thrive in. Um, and, and just like that verse says, when we do, and when we have that great responsibility, it is just that it's a great responsibility. We have to, understand that if we are blessed in that way, it's still going to be hard because as a Christian, surrendering to God when you have everything that you need monetarily, that's a difficult thing to do. It's difficult to give him the glory for that. That that takes a very strong faith still in a different way, right? The love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. That's right. I just, I loved that and I was like, um, I feel bad that it's easier for some. I I totally agree with that. You can look at if you look at a a horizontal perspective and you keep your mind on like the things that man, I wish, I wish, I wish this, I wish that, I wish I wish blah blah blah. Um we can get caught up in that very quickly and be like, okay, I've see I see the comments all the time. 
all the time on people's posts that's like, oh, she just bought her six piece of furniture this month and I can't even pay my car note. And yeah, like some of that is a little, it's it's very boastfully and, and I don't think people mean to put it out there like that, but it can come across in, in a negative way in this day and time when so many people are struggling. But, but we also have to remember that like every person has their own demons. They all have their own struggles and we're looking at highlight reels and I know I keep bringing that up, but I just think that's the world that we live in now. We, it, and at, with social media, it makes things a lot harder. Um, so don't be tempted to that. If social media tempts you to be, um, to be jealous of somebody or causes you to, you know, like have a heart that is not joyful, then maybe it's not for you. You need to hop off for a little bit, you know? Yeah, don't envy what your neighbor has. That's right, because all of them have their own calling and their own thing that God needs to use them for if they'll surrender to him, right? How long and hard did she work to get the furniture? That's so true. Like, I mean... This particular person has a huge social media following. I mean, I didn't like the couch that they got, but I mean, it, that's not me. It's not my house. And I was like, cool for her. I mean, the first thing I didn't think about was, I didn't think about that. I actually was just, um, I don't even know why I clicked on the comments. I saw it and I was like, wait, where was the other? I don't know. I, I, I think her house is really beautiful. So I was like watching a cleaning video of hers or something. It was showing it and people were like, being negative about it and then I was just thinking about that a lot and I was thinking about she just seems like such a sweet like person like she comes off as that way and so I was like man that has to tear her up when she reads comments like that like it people are just so mean about everything you know that's why when I get on here now and talk about Jesus I'm like if I was talking about a couch they'd be tearing me up still so I might as well just talk about my savior I'd rather, much rather take the heat for that than for the way my house looks, you know? <laughs> yeah. Same thing with the makeup stuff. If y'all was on this live doing a get ready with me makeup tutorial, people be ripping me apart because my, my eyeshadow is the wrong color or I didn't do it right or that company is horrible or whatever it is. So you just got to show up the way God tells you to show up and trust him in the process. That's what I have to say. Um... But we're done, and so I'm going to pray, and then if y'all want to stay on and, and chat for a minute, I'm going to finish this drink before I go and hop on the Nordic Trike bike. So, anyway. <laughs> um, let's pray, and then we'll hop off. Uh, God, I just... I just want to say, like, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all these people who choose to come and learn about you, God. I, I know that you're the one that's growing and authoring this community, and I think that that's the coolest thing ever. Um, none of us deserve any good thing that you give us, God, but we are thankful that you pour wisdom out. You're the one who wisdom comes from. Um, you're the one who God's directs, leads our steps. You're the seed of truth, God, that... Uh, everything else sprouts from. And so I pray that we would focus on you and you alone and allow you to just guide and direct us and just be that um, light for our life to show us where we need to go and what we need to do for your glory, God. And I pray and ask that as we surrender to you, that whatever need that we have, God, whatever prayer requests that anybody here has, God, whether it's healing, whether it's medical, whether it's... Um, you know, family issues or friend issues or um, personal issues uh, or whether they just need boldness to be able to carry out whatever you've asked them to do. God, I pray for that. And I ask that you would give them the strength and the wisdom and discernment to be able to know what that is. God, I'm so thankful for you and your goodness. And I just ask that you would um, just forgive us and just allow us to go in the world today and be disciples for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love that accent. Yeah, South Mississippi. Thank y'all for being here. But I'm going to finish my drink, and if y'all want to stay on, y'all can, or if y'all want to get off, that's fine too. Yeah, Mississippi too. She's on the apps. 
Um, by the way, for those of you who joined, there is a now a free version of Patreon, which I'm so excited about. So, if y'all um want to just like join for free and be able to get like a few um like encouraging words throughout uh, the month or week or whatever. I'm really excited about that. It's like a better it's like a better way to do an email. You know what I'm saying? Bible study Saturday still. Courtney, did you see my um my update my thing? I posted a video in Patreon. Um, I posted an, um, an update in there. If you'll go watch that and then message me. Um, let's see. I still am doing 75 holy. I sure am. Thank you. Yeah. What time is it there? I It is. Currently 5.53. Um, I usually do this from like 5. It's usually 5 to 6. I say 5 to 5.45 because I need to get off at 5.45. But it's usually 5 to 6. Um, no, I missed it. Go look, Courtney. So, I, I had explained like a bunch of things in there if you'll go look and then message me we can talk about it it is an app patreon's an app and it's just um it's like it's a subscription app but like i wanted them to be able to do a free version and then they didn't have that until about a week ago because i know like not everybody wants to subscribe to something and so they came out with a free version and you can join for free and you can see um like, weekly, there's different weekly things that I'll send out on there. Like, weekly, you know, Bible verses or whatever it is. And then, um, the subscription to everything else is a dollar. So, there's more on there, but it's all available for a dollar. The only, the bigger ones only get more digital downloads because they wanted to, to give more. So, I, um, go to, uh... Oh, man, I've never shared my church out loud on here because, um, for some reason that kind of, like, scares me. Yes, I will be uploading them to YouTube, but I do go, um, to a church that is a congregational Methodist church, um, don't, yeah, just the type of church. I go to a congregational Methodist church, but it's really more, like, it's really, like, non-denominational I didn't even know that it was a congregational Methodist church um I was just specifically looking for truth um I was looking for um y'all are so great y'all are so defensive of me like y'all 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 are so great y'all are awesome y'all are so great because y'all like immediately were like no don't do it <laughs> I love y'all um I mean, it's pretty obvious. If you live in this area, if you live in, like, the um, South Mississippi area, like, Hattiesburg area, you would probably know. Um, but I don't think anybody would be able to, like, really pinpoint where I live because I am so, like, scattered. South Mississippi is so scattered. There's, like, things that, like, all over the place that, you like, I go to. So, anyway. Um... I don't, it's, I mean, I guess, like, saying I, I go to a congregational Methodist church could make somebody think something about me, but that's okay. Like, I'm literally friends with the pastor and his wife. I mean, we, he comes on my family vacations over the summer because they're close to my age, and, um, we have kids that are around the same age, and we just love the Lord at our church. Like, we just love Jesus, and, um, it's just it's not really a denominational thing. It's about loving Jesus thing. Like, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised when we get to heaven. And there's all denominations in heaven. <laughs> We're all going to be worshiping the same God. Um, I just think it's about loving Jesus, right? And it's truth. As long as the church te teaches truth like full doctrinal truth there is nothing doctrine that there there falters on um 
and God will lead you in that. If you ask, he will lead you in that. Um, I know, Katie, I, I read, I guess I read that wrong. Um, I, I read it and I was like immediately going to say, and then I was like, I guess that was like the Holy Spirit being like, <laughs> um, not that I wouldn't love for some of y'all to come to church with me. That'd be great if you lived in South Mississippi and were in the area, but, um, a lot of people who don't intend for good on this place. Um, I teach high school English. Juniors and seniors. They are quite interesting. The pastor at my church is what solidified it for me speaking truth. Yes. Yeah, it's all about truth. That's why, that's why we, um go to church like we definitely don't go to feel good we go to to be um to sharpen each other and to be sharpened and to gather in community to worship God for what he's already been doing all week it's an outpouring of our worship um yeah imperfect people loving a perfect God you're so right you have an amazing day too I'm glad y'all are here Fifth grade special ed, I, I I admire you a lot. I have a sister-in-law that teaches 7th and 8th, I think. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, special education is a lot of work in, in our school systems because there's so much. Um, you can't, it's like you can't just like teach them. You have to, there's so much paperwork and stuff, you know. Yeah, Christians don't go to church. They are the church. That's true. But we do go to a building that we call the church. So, but you are right. We are the church. I hope y'all have a great day. Ooh, homecoming. Bye, y'all. I'm just, I'm saying bye to the people that are saying bye. I'm not getting off. I've got this much left in my drink. I've been trying churches in my area, and the two in my area stream the sermon on a screen. No live. Oh, interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about, like, they're not being a pastor at a church. Um, I mean, I get that you can, like, stream it from a different place, and it can still be truth because they're preaching, but I don't know, like... I mean, how, I just don't, how do you shepherd a flock if you're not there? You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm merely here to enjoy the accent. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I am from the South. I've always been from the South and... I'm sure to some of y'all, I sound quite literally insane. Yeah, I really value the ability to converse with our pastor. Right, like my, my, like our, our pastor, like when I walk out of the front door of the church, he like gives me a big old hug and I'm telling like, love the message, whatever. Like I said, we're friends. I mean, he doesn't just like grip up every person that walks by like him me, me and his wife are like best friends um <laughs> no I'm not Canadian um but we're yeah like it's so personal like I could feel like I could call him at any time and then our youth pastor which is our associate pastor is one of mine and my husband's best friends so I just wanted to clarify that like I said he like gives me a big hug and then I was like oh that's probably weird to some people but we are from the south and he hit like we literally vacation together like his family goes with me on all like on my family vacation with my mom and all her sisters like they go with us because we're that close of a fan we're like that close so I'm a hugger yeah yeah anyways um, non dom options of video church is great. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if that's your only option, then, I mean, that's your only option, but 
I do wonder like how you how the pastor like connects with people, right? I know, right? I struggle too. And our church is pretty big. I mean, it's we have two services. It's a pretty big church. We have a pretty big church, but um I still know a lot of people. I mean, it's not a mega church by any means, but it's a bigger church for our area. And um I I still know like a lot of people, but some of that is getting in to some of the groups and different things like that like they said like they small groups and different things. There are live worship and all the other people who make the church run. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, but like the, I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm thinking is like the, um, and I'll say this and then I'll hop off because it is six o'clock. I guess what I'm thinking is like the biblical view of a pastor is to shepherd his flock. Like he's supposed to be that kind of like the hands of Jesus you know, with his church, and so I just wonder, like, um, have, have fun reading that. I just wonder how he's able to do that with, you know, like, not being present. It's just my question. I mean, maybe he is, but that's just my question. We do, we should live stream church for people that don't come to church, you know, like, through YouTube and Facebook and different things like that, but Right, Jesus Christ is the shepherd, but the um, pastors are called are called to shepherd the flock in a way that, like, under the authority of Jesus, like that calling. With that calling comes like a position of like being that person that's there for that community that God's brought together. Um, yeah, usually local pastors, yeah. Okay, y'all, I'm going to hop off now um, and go and get on the spin bike because now my pre-workout is, like, tingling my face off. So, I love y'all. Um, I love y'all, and I hope that y'all have. Um, I'm deceived in that doctoring. Doctoring. Oh, is that? Okay, well, we're just um, going to keep going with that. But anyways, I hope y'all have a great day. I love y'all so much and I will see y'all Monday. So, um, y'all have a great one and I'll see y'all then. Bye y'all.